Hey YouTube, this is Jaden coming at you. Um, I'm sorry there hasn't been any new content posted up, and um, as of late, things have just been busy, but I uh, wanted to make a video introducing a new segment that I promised I would do with a friend at our locals um, last weekend and then the weekend before that, and it's kind of just continued to get put off, so I thought I'd put up the first video of it at least. Hopefully he won't be too mad at me, uh, and we will make another part to it uh, this weekend, hopefully. So, um, first off, I got a couple announcements. Um, I'm going to, I just, I'm talking like 10 minutes ago, uh, excuse me, purchased everything for my Aquaforce deck left that I needed. I'm talking Maelstroms, Basils, um, and Perfect Guards. Um, I should be getting all of that next week, so when I get all that next week, I will be taking this this budget Aquaforce deck that um, I posted for you guys. <coughs> Sorry, guys. And basically tearing it apart and turning it into the Aquaforce deck that I want. So I'll have that for you guys. Um, also, um, I'm working on a trade with my friend Clint. Uh, for his uh, great nature deck um, and uh, to help he decided he wants to play a different deck so I'm going to help him by building another deck and I am going to modify the deck a little bit and I'll have a great nature deck profile for you guys too so um, I'll have those for you guys to look forward to so hopefully this weekend I can get Clint uh, I can get uh, the trade done with him so I can get him set with his new deck and I can have two deck profiles for you next week, which would be really awesome. Um, so keep your fingers crossed there. Um, also, um, we're at 27 subscribers, I believe. That's a great number. Uh, we still need those 23 more so we can have that contest for the free mat. So uh, please keep trying to ow, get me uh, um, 23 more subscribers so we can do that. Um, I might push it to 40 because I'm really interested to go ahead and do it, but I'm probably going to – I'm I've, I've considered dropping to 40, but I'm really hell-bent on staying at 50, so please keep spreading the word. Um, I'm not um, – I'm sorry if it seems like when I tell you guys that I'm going to have content up every other day, and – I'm sorry if I ever did say that I was. I didn't mean it like that. I try to have content posted as regularly as I can, but with school and life and, you know, it gets pretty hectic. So now I'm we're, I'm going to get into the last thing on this video, which was going to be a segment that me and my friend Christian, uh, another uh, Shadow Strike member, were going to do. Uh, you might have uh, noticed Christian from uh, his Zeal deck profile. If you haven't gone to check that out, you're interested in the Dimensional Police uh, Zeal uh, variant decks, please go check that out. It's a very well done profile. Um, so go check that out. He gives pretty good explanations, so please check him out uh, for me if uh, you will. Now, this segment was actually something that I was thinking of in my head, but I, did, I wasn't so sure about it, and then Christian texted me about it, and we both kind of had the same idea. And we even had the same name for the segment. And the name of the segment is The Underdog Cards. Now, we all know what an underdog is. An underdog is somebody or something that everyone counts out, never gives a chance, and... Or someone that is just underappreciated for their talents. So what this segment is going to be about is me and him, we're going to take certain cards and we're going to talk about them. Cards that we feel that don't get their appreciation that they deserve. Um, <clears throat> so we hope you enjoy this. Um, like I said, I'm, I might post one, maybe two tonight if I get real into it. But I promise uh, I'm going to try and do my best to get one done with him since this was partially his idea. Uh, so anyway, the first card that I want to talk about, it is possibly my favorite grade one from this clan. Notice how I said possibly. Um, it's a very versatile card and it helps me close the door when I'm trying to finish games. And that card is Slagle Dagger. And 
I feel this card doesn't get the respect it deserves because this card really is a game changer. And the reason I say that is if you guys noticed, I posted a deck profile on my Blonde Ezel Pelinor deck. And the reason I said this uh, card was good was for multiple reasons. And why I feel this card's underappreciated. His ability is real simple. He's a grade 1 with 7,000 power. If you have 4 more gold paladin rear guards, you can counterblast one card and give him plus 2,000 power. And since it's an act ability, you can use it more than once. My favorite card to stick him behind is Gigatech. And I play 2 or... Yeah. 3 as well, 2. Yeah, 2 of him in the deck. And he is my favorite card to have on the rear guard period but i especially like to have this as a column when pelinor is my vanguard and the reason is i like to use uh, slagle dagger's ability counterblast maybe one or two times okay so that's plus four thousand here so let's say if i counterblasted twice so seven and four that's eleven thousand power and i'm gonna Use my calculator here because I always kind of have to use dice to keep track of this. Okay, so we got 11,000 power. Okay. Let's say Pelinor swings and your opponent null guards. Okay, let's just do that to say for argument's sake. Say you hit a trigger. Um, okay, wait, back up. Pelinor attacks, his limit break. You're going to return these two rear guards that are on your other column to the deck. So, plus 5, plus 5. So, you just added 10,000 power to this column. So, then Pelinor attacks. His limit break is active. You added 5 here. So, I, the way I look at it is you're just adding 10,000 to the column. 5 and 5. Say you hit a trigger. That's another 5,000. And if you hit a critical, great. If not, you can just tag that on and off. So, say you hit a trigger. You're going to give the 5,000 here, obviously. So, he's gotten the 5,000 power up from the trigger, and he's gotten the 5,000 power up from Pelinor. So, that puts him at 20,000. Well, his ability adds 2,000 power. Uh, one second, guys. Adds 2,000 power when he attacks the Vanguard. So, if you hit one trigger, that's 22,000 with a Pelinor limit break. Now remember, he gained a 5,000 point boost, and that put him at 11, and he's boosting with this. So, okay, you figure the 5,000 from Pelinor, the 5,000 from the trigger, and the 2,000 from himself. So that's 5, 5, and 2. That puts him at 22. He's at 11, keep in mind. So 11, 28 plus 11. So... No, wait, 22 plus 11, I'm sorry. That's 33,000 power slamming at your opponent. And say you hit another trigger, that's another 5,000 power. Guys, that is 30... I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't think so. That is 38,000 power. I mean, add it up. Okay, you got the 10,000 from your Gigatech. The 5,000 from Pelinor, the 5,000 from the one trigger, the 7,000 starting from Slagle Dagger, and then, then the 4,000 power that you added to it. Slagle Dagger is what makes your column so big. If you time his effects properly, he can almost win you the game. Now, there was one time last weekend, um, I could have sworn I would have won the game with this and I hit two triggers so he was high up there and I used his ability twice so you know he gains four and then Pelinor's limit break on top of that um, it was swinging and I hit two triggers plus a crit and I think I thought I was gonna hit him and he ended up null guarding his perfect uh, null guarding his vanguard when my vanguard attacked and then he had a second null guard in his hand which saved him from that so but I'm sorry if that was a lot of mumbo jumbo, if it was a lot of numbers thrown around in there, because I know it was. I hate math. But I wanted to show to you just how stupid this guy is. Also, take into account the other 
card that I use in my Blonde Ezel Pelinor deck. If you haven't checked the full deck profile out, go check it out. Blonde Ezel. Blonde Ezel. The reason I like Ezel so much is every single time he attacks, no matter what you boost him with, he has the potential to gain another 5,000 power on top of this. So if he's at 17, he's going to go 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. That's 22,000. That's why I love this card. And not just Blonde Ezel decks, not just Pelinor decks, not just my Blonde Ezel Pelinor hybrid deck. It also works in Spectral Duke. Um, when I play my Spectral Duke deck, I like to have this guy behind Spectral Duke. And the reason is... When I'm getting ready to use Spectral Duke's Limit Break, I'll use his ability once or twice and get him at a nine or 11,000 booster, and then the first time when I swing with Spectral Duke, I won't boost with him, and then when I use his ability and he stands back up, say I hit one trigger, that's 16 and 11, that's 27,000 swinging. So that's pretty good. I just don't think... <coughs> Guys, sorry. <coughs> My allergies are killing me, guys. I apologize. I just don't think that this card gets the respect it deserves. It is one of the best boosters in the game. Um, some people say, well, Tron's better. Tron's good. He is very good. He's a 10k booster, and it's pretty simple to get his effect off. But I like Slagle Dagger, and if you've watched my... Blonde as old Pelinor deck profile, I don't play Tron. Now, I would play Tron if I could, but I'm sorry. I play three Slagle Dagger. I love this card. Um, and I played three Slagle Dagger in my, in my Spectral Duke deck profile on here. I just love Slagle Dagger. Um, that's why I feel I felt, you know, to me, it was the best thing to open up this new segment with, the underdog cards. Um, people don't think 2,000 points really mean a lot, but... <laughs> Guys, 2,000 power sometimes decides the game. Um, so, I don't know what else to say about this, except if you play Gold Paladin and you don't use this card, your only excuse for not using it is that you don't have any. And if you don't have any, go on eBay, order them. I'm sure you can get them there. Or go to, there's like five or six different card websites you can order them from. Go to your locals, try and trade for them. Heck, I know my locals personally, he has four of these in his book, and they're two bucks. Two bucks for a card that decides a game like that? I'm sorry. This card deserves a spot in every Gold Paladin deck. If you're not running at least two, there's something wrong with you. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment. Uh, it's going to be probably a... Um, it's probably going to be one of my favorite to do, um, because I do like talking about cards that I feel don't get a fair try in decks, um, and just to show you that I'm not blowing smoke, you know, three Slagle in my as old Pelinor deck. Um, it's gonna, I'm gonna, I hope that this is a lot of fun, this is, uh, a segment both me and Christian really thought would be a good one. Um, I think there's a lot of cards in Vanguard that don't get the appreciation for their effects. So, that's why this segment is here. It is to give appreciation to the cards that people down, um, talk and say that they don't, uh, they don't deserve a spot in the deck. Um, so, um, anyway, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Tell me what you think about Slagle Dagger as a card. Tell me... If you think it's a good card, if you think it's a terrible card, well, if you think if it's a terrible card, you're a moron. But uh, anyway, just give me your thoughts on the card, as long as they're clean. I mean, I mean, guys, I mean, let's be mature here. Don't just put in the comment section, I think Slagle Dagger's stupid, you know. So please just remember to keep, I mean, the reason I made this channel was to have good discussion topics, so please keep it that way. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe. Um, look for all the new content that will be coming next week. Hopefully two new deck profiles total. And I'll see you all later.